welcome to our development diaries, a series of videos from playing with fire simulations. These will show the development of our content within VBS2. Please note that all the content shown is work in progress and it doesn't represent the final product. Our current project is a multi-agency training simulator incorporating police, fire and paramedic emergency services. In this video we see our first character model, a firefighter. He's got a more bulky outfit than a regular character, but we haven't finalised his uniform textures. Let's make him look a bit more like a firefighter. Let's give him a helmet and some breathing apparatus. There, much better. For now I'll leave him without his breathing mask, but we'll show that later in the video. You can also see this character is holding a custom fire hose nozzle. The nozzle can supply either water or a foam solution, just depending on the type of fire to be tackled. We've also been working on a flexible fire hose, however this video won't show its progress. We've developed a fire system which simulates different classes of fire, including dynamic flames, smoke and sound. Here we have some pallets which are all dry. I'll set the first pallet on fire. The fire system will assign some properties to the object. Every object has a certain amount of fuel which the fire can burn. Some objects may not be flammable and so they won't catch on fire. If left unattended, the temperature of fire will rise and we'll see the flames and smoke and sound increase. As the fire on the first pallet increases, the potential for other objects nearby to catch fire will also increase. The range at which other objects can catch fire is determined by the size of the object currently on fire. We now see that the fire is spread to the second pallet. In order to stop it spreading to the third pallet, we need to either tackle the fire on the second pallet, or we can cover the third pallet with water. With the fire hose connected to a water supply, this can be used to tackle the blaze. As the water hits the object, it reduces the temperature of the fire, and if the temperature of the fire is reduced enough, the fire will go out. By applying enough water to an object, we can saturate it. Before I tackle the fire on the second pallet, I'll apply water to the third pallet, which will stop the fire from spreading. On the first pallet we can see that the fire has actually gone out. This is because all the fuel in the object has been used up so the fire has nothing more to burn. Now that the third pallet is wet, I'll tackle the fire on the second pallet. As you see, when we apply water to a hot fire, steam is generated. The temperature of the fire is reducing as more water is applied. With enough water being applied to the second pallet, we can see now that the fire has gone out. The second pallet is wet, and so won't catch on fire again. That was a demonstration of a simple Class A fire, ordinary combustible objects. Let's move on to some other examples. Here we have a burning pallet again, and nearby a tyre. As the pallet fire gets hotter, it's possible that the tyre may catch on fire. This is to demonstrate that objects will react in different ways. As the tyre catches fire, we see the smoke is a lot blacker than a wood fire. This is still a Class A fire, so either water or foam could be used to tackle the situation. Let's move on. Here we have an example of a Class B fire, a flammable liquid. Here the fire from the pallet has spread to an oil tank and it's ignited. Notice how we have a lot more flames and start with black smoke. 
As this is a class B fire, using water this time on the fire will have little effect. Therefore, a foam solution is required. Once the foam hits the object, it will smother the fire and it will go out. The foam effects are still in development and so hopefully you get the idea. Here's another example. We have a burning pallet and someone's placed a propane tank near. Yes, we're asking for trouble. The propane tank won't catch directly as it's made from metal. However, as the pallet fire gets hotter, so the pressure in the propane tank will increase and at some point it may explode. So let's stand back. As the propane tank explodes, there is a fireball which casts fire all around. We see that there's a pallet in the distance which has just caught fire. For all of these demonstrations, we've been wearing a fire suit, and so standing near a fire won't damage the character. If a character stands too near a fire without a breathing mask, they will inhale smoke, and this will damage the character. So for the final part of this video, I'll fit the character with his breathing mask. You can see as it's fitted, the character's vision is slightly limited. In real life, the respirator has a series of LEDs at the front to show the capacity of the air tank. We've replicated these LEDs in the mask, and you can see, just as in real life, the LEDs go through a self-test phase, and then will show the capacity of the air tank. In this case, two green LEDs indicate that the air tank is at full capacity. As the breathing mask is worn, so air in the tank is used up. Here we see the tank is now at three quarters full, indicated by a single green LED. Later on, the tank is now at half capacity, shown by a yellow LED. And finally, a flashing red LED indicates that the air tank is less than a quarter full. I hope you enjoyed this video. The next video will show development of our fire engine. If you're interested in us creating content for your organisation, please do contact us.